I like that trick with the blank slides. I've never seen that done before. And that takes courage, because usually, you know, you, you balance it, but that's just you, all you, by yourself. That was cool. I like that. Up next, we've got a startup founder. He's the founder of Rumored. He is a nerd, a big, a big finance nerd. That's a compliment in this room. In this, with these people, we're all nerds. Uh, he entered the world of entrepreneurship in 2014 after spending eight years in the investment and banking uh, and private equity industry. Make some noise for Farouk Malik. So whenever someone asks me, where are you from, or where is home, they're usually expecting a one-line answer, such as, I'm from Chicago. But what they get from me is a story. I was born in India, I grew up in the Middle East and in Australia, I went to high school and college in Australia, I worked in Sydney, Dubai, and New York City, and after spending the last four years in New York City, I recently moved to Dallas. <laughs> and, and by the time I'm done with my story, people are not as excited, people are pretty bored. And, and I like to think that I'm unique, but I'm not. Turns out there are 232 million people in the world that now live in countries which is not the country that they were born in. And that is a huge number. That is two-thirds of the US population almost that's moved around the world. And if you think about the movement, where has this movement come from? My first thought was, obviously, it's from the developing world to the developed world. And while that used to be the case, that is now changing. The developed world now has these urban centers that is attracting, that are attracting lots of talent and resources from not just the regions in the developing world, but also from the developed world. So if you look at the map, all the areas in dark brown are the new sources of international migration, where people are actually moving to. Which, comes, which brings me to the US. Did you know that there are eight million US citizens living outside the US? And that is a substantial number, if you think about it. If you were to put all these people into one state, that would be the 12th largest state, right between Washington and Virginia. Oh, sorry, Virginia and Washington. Uh, and where are all these people living? They're living all over the world. Estimates are they're in about 160 different countries around the world. The darker the green, the more the concentration of Americans. Let me try and explain this movement uh, using a very simple example of Disney World. So Disney World has six resorts around the world, uh, four outside the US. When they opened the first one in Tokyo in 1983, you had Americans move to Japan and they hired Japanese talent locally. When they opened the one in Paris in 1992, you had Americans, Japanese, and French people working in France. Follow the trend, and when it was time to open the latest one in Shanghai, which opened this year, you had Americans, Japanese, French, people from Hong Kong, and people all, from all over the world, really, working in China, working on this resort. And you can, this trend is exactly how it works in almost every other industry, whether that's real estate, and of course technology, uh, construction, healthcare, and so on. Yeah, so that's, that's Disney Shanghai. Let me try and explain. A <laughs> so have a look at these photos. Three beautiful skylines. Uh, they all look fairly similar, but they're all from three different parts of the world. You've got Chicago and Shanghai on the right, and you've got Dubai on the left. Three cities in different parts of the world with very different cultures. You've got Hong Kong, Sydney, and Singapore. So what am I trying to say here? Cynics will say that this is just capitalism. Other cynics will say that, oh, this is not good because they're taking away from the local culture of these cities. But I disagree. What this shows is that people in all these major centers and many more centers are, they're really, what they want from life is not very different. They're looking for a similar lifestyle. They're looking to live in a certain way, which is very similar. And I think that is important to understand. So, does that mean the world is getting pretty homogenous? I don't think so. I think the world is actually getting more diverse. You have cultures influencing each other, you have cultures integrating with each other, so you have a very diverse world. And the best example, or a really good example to demonstrate that is McDonald's. So this is McDonald's, different menu items from all over the world. Look at that, like anyone want a black squid ink burger from Japan? I didn't know that existed. Can anyone tell me where the largest McDonald's store is in the world? It's not in the US. Exactly, it's in Moscow. I, didn't, I, I would not have guessed that. It is the largest and busiest store. It can seat up to 700 customers. But it's not all diverse. We now live in a day and age where your morning cup of coffee will taste the same, whether you're tasting it, 
without, the, without those additions. But it will taste the same whether you're tasting it in New York, in Tokyo, in Barcelona, in Rio, or in Mexico City. And I think that's incredible if you think about it. So we, we now live in a world that's so global where people really want similar things in life. They want to lead in a certain way. Despite that, what, I've, what disappoints me and which baffles me to an extent is there is still a lot of prejudice and bigotry in the world. Uh, and I don't know why, but what gives me hope is that the voices of reason far outnumber the voices of bigotry. Thank you, and that gives me hope. So just to end, we all have different life experiences that each of us can learn, learn from. So next time you meet someone, instead of just asking them where they're from, just say, tell me about yourself. Thank you.